What's up everybody, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here, and today I'm gonna be bringing you a little bit more of an informal video. This won't be an in-depth install like we usually do, kind of more of a vlog, but we've got the Ranger up here on the lift, as you can see. I have the wheel off, and unfortunately this time, it's not for a cool upgrade, it's because we broke something. So what happened is, we burned up the CV here on the passenger side of the truck. I don't think that this is necessarily a Ford issue as much as it was just us off-roading it a little too aggressively and something tore the boot and then it ended up getting a bunch of dirt and water in there. So that whole axle is pretty well done. Now with that, I already ordered a new one. You can see there on the floor. So it shouldn't be too tricky to get this installed. And for those of you who have done a CV axle replacement in the past, this is probably nothing new to you, but for anybody that's new to it or is concerned that maybe theirs is burned up, this might be just a useful quick reference guide to what you need to take apart to get to it and what that whole replacement involves. So we ordered one that is actually, you know, a FOMOCO real OEM part and we just wanted something that we knew would hold up and it's kind of hard to come by parts for these trucks right now too because they're so new so the first thing you're going to want to know if you think you've got a bad cv is in the cab you should be able to hear it kind of rattling or clicking as you're driving because it's going to be spinning and so here you know we could tell pretty much right away that there was something wrong and we could hear it clanking around down there but then once you come underneath the vehicle you can either go you know under here where you can get under the arm or pull the wheel off it'll be probably be pretty evident if it's busted you'll see that since the boot is torn we've got grease all over in here it kind of spattered and the dirt stuck to it so that's a big giveaway but then even just the boot you can see is torn and then inside the arms we've got grease all up in here is just sort of coated and even through some forward towards the front of the truck so the other thing with that is the actual axle shaft itself if you grab onto it you can hear all that play and wiggle in there. That's definitely not supposed to be like that. So those are just some things you can check to make sure that it is either bad or good if you're concerned for your vehicle. But let's get right into tearing this thing apart. So to get the axle out, obviously I'm gonna to need to get this whole knuckle out of the way, which means we're gonna to have to undo it from the upper control arm and we're also gonna to have to undo the actual axle nut down here. But before we get into that, I'm just gonna cut these little zip ties off, get some slack in our ABS lines, take these brackets off for the brake lines so that way we've got some room to play and then we'll start tearing that apart. Okay, so we got both of those free and this is just a 10 millimeter and an eight millimeter. So those are pretty easy to get off and I just screw them back into the knuckle so I don't lose them. So now let's go ahead and get this tie rod end disconnected, get that out of the way. All right, there we go. 15 millimeter deep well works really well here because of that stud. And then next thing we're gonna wanna do is just give this a couple taps and make sure that comes free, but you don't wanna hit the actual threads or the top of this cause you can bung this all up. So you wanna hit on the side of the knuckle here. So we'll give that a couple taps. With the tie rod loose here, I left the nut on with a couple threads. It can wiggle a bit, but I wanted to keep it here to stabilize this whole knuckle. So that way when we loosen this axle nut, I'm not fighting it moving back and forth. And you could technically do this first. I just wasn't thinking about it when I started, but what you'll need is somebody to hold the brake. So this isn't gonna rotate as you pull on it. Next, I wanna go ahead and get the upper control arms ball joint out of here, get that stud free. But one thing I like to do is there's usually quite a bit of tension on these upper arms. So I like to get some wrenches back here, loosen the frame mount so this way it's not kind of spring loaded. Then once I get this free, I can lift that up out of the way. We can move our tie rod and get this whole knuckle shifted over. And that should also start to give us the access we need to get the axle out. We'll leave this on a couple threads just to kind of catch it if there is still some tension. And then I'm gonna tap the knuckle here with the hammer and hopefully this breaks free. All 
There we go, that's perfect. So with our tie rod end loose, our upper control arms loose, the wires and stuff are out of the way, and we've got our nut off of the actual axle here. The other thing I'm gonna do is take the sway bar off to give us some of that extra play that we need to get this thing all the way out. Now, normally you'd just try to disconnect it at the end link, but these end links are just really a pain in the butt to try and get loose or get them off of there. So I'm actually gonna go to the frame mounts and undo the whole sway bar. There's basically four bolts that are gonna hold it in that you'll need an 18 for to, to get them off, but we're gonna pull that down first so it's at least got some slack in it and then we can keep working up here. So now you can see we've got that sway bar disconnected. It's just hanging down. Next up, we need to take this caliper off for the brake and then we can pull the rotor off there. There's just gonna be two big fat bolts here in the rear that you wanna undo. And those are gonna be an 18 as well. Okay, that is out of the way. Obviously, once you've got your caliper tied up out of the way, you just wanna make sure that there's some play in that line and it's not stretching everything too too much or, you know, cracking those lines at all. So with that clear, let's pull this rotor off here now. And you can see we're getting pretty bare bones. So all we gotta do, I'm gonna undo this screw at the top for that upper control arm now. And since I loosened those frame mounts, this doesn't have a lot of tension on it. So you can see there's a lot of room to play there. You could actually even keep it a little tighter than I did, but just a little safer like that. And then put this nut back on here so I don't lose it. And we'll do the tie rod real quick too. Okay, there you go. You can see we've got a lot more play to work with now. Typically what's gonna happen then is with these axle shafts, it's, it's gonna be pressed in here pretty tightly and depending how old your truck is or how much you've off-roaded it, you know, that's gonna affect how much this might be seized into place. So. What you may have to do is hit the end of this with a hammer to punch it through. Normally you don't want to hit where there's threads, but this whole axle is getting replaced anyway. So we're not too worried about that because it's a whole new unit. But once we get that free, we can work the rest of it out. All right, there we go. Not gonna lie, that's a little bit of a bear to work that back. There's a lot of pressure pushing that way, but if you can get the knuckle forced down, you're only really fighting these mounts at the bottom here. And I probably could have loosened these a bit more, but I'm not too worried about that. So now I just want to get this back section out from the truck. Oh man, all right, that worked somehow. This actually worked out better than I thought. There's a pretty big gap here to try and pry with, and uh, it was not as tight as I would have hoped, but with the pry bar around the end, I was able to kind of hook the axle shaft and pry this way, as opposed to hooking the end where it's actually kind of spiked. So like that, it was enough force to get it loose. It really shouldn't be super, super tight on there, but this thing is definitely garbage now. So let's get this out of here. All right, guys, so I put a little bit of grease on the splines for the front here. On the new axle, the inside actually came greased for the part that's going inboard on the truck. We're gonna take the new axle shaft here, get those splines lined up, and you'll see that it'll just barely kind of start to seat in. It's enough that it'll actually turn, but it's not going all the way into the slot like it should. So what we're gonna need to do now is give it a couple taps with the hammer to get it seated in place. But what I don't wanna do is mess up these threads because that's really gonna ruin our day if we screw that up. So I'm gonna put the nut on here first so we can kind of tap the nut and then that pressure should transfer through. All right, that's one way to do it. So the hammer thing wasn't working out. It just seemed like the boots were eating up all the force just from trying to tap on this. So as you saw, I kind of just went for the barbaric method of grabbing this and uh, ramming the axle into the mount on the back. I don't know if that's the most professional way to do it, but it actually seated without me having to give it too much force. So now we'll take the nut off the front here and we just need to work these splines in to the actual hub. So now that we got the shaft seated in here, I'm pretty happy with that. We are running a little bit later in the day than I expected. So I was gonna swap this coil over right now, but I think 
just for the sake of continuity and helping this make a little more sense for you guys watching, I'm gonna leave this in. We're gonna reattach it and kind of walk through the steps backwards real quick to get everything put together. And then one last thing I'll note is you'll see there's still some gap here on this side of that shaft. Once we actually thread the nut on there, we can tighten and it'll kind of pull this together. But we're gonna get to work reattaching the bottom of that coilover and everything else I pulled off. And then we should be looking good. Yeah, getting these calipers back on can be a little bit of a fight. If you guys kind of wedge it up in here, make sure it's all flat with the rotor on, then you should be able to get these to thread in again. So that top one started, we'll get the bottom in and then I can tighten those. Thread this axle nut on here just to play it safe. So hitting these nuts with an impact gun isn't necessarily the best way to put them on, and I'm not really going for torque to spec right now because I'm gonna be taking this apart in just another day. But just to show them together, I hit them there quick. What you normally wanna do is get some sort of socket or wrench to put on the end of the stubs here, so that way you can turn the nut and this and get it to tighten without just infinitely spinning the ball joints on these. So you'll see down here, if I go like this, I can tighten it and keep that center shaft from spinning. So that way it is actually tightening to the knuckle. Okay, so now some of the last things that you don't wanna forget as you're getting this all together, obviously you're going through, torquing everything down. You wanna make sure if you loosen this frame mount for the upper control arm that you tighten this back up with those wrenches so that way this has some amount of tension on there and it's not really loose and wiggling in the back. Also you want to reclip this or zip tie it if your plastic clips broke like ours did. And then the other thing we got to do is get our sway bar mounted back up to the frame and this I'll tighten up all the way because we're not going to need to take it off again but we'll get that bolted on there. And then we can come all the way back to the front where we started and we'll work on getting this axle nut tightened down all the way and that should be a wrap on it. All right, as you guys can see, we got that sway bar mounted back up with those nuts and bolts that I pulled off before. It's just, it's four of them. So it's pretty simple to get it back where it was. But now that we've got that in, I'm gonna tighten down this axle nut here. And once again, you'll want somebody to stand on the brakes or you know find some way to kind of wedge this to keep it from turning. But get a couple spins in. Okay, so as this is going on, like I said before, when you look back here, it should be pulling that axle back in and really seating it into the hub as you go, because we had it most of the way, but we'll get a couple more pulls in here so it's actually tight. All right, there we go. Got that axle nut on there. Once again, torque it to spec, and that is gonna be pretty much a wrap on doing this swap. Obviously, the one other thing I didn't address that I know people will be upset about is all the grease that's still spattered around in here. I am gonna clean that out. I usually don't like to clean it with the hubs and things exposed where there's grease, because if you get it in there, it's only gonna wear parts prematurely. So having some things assembled so you don't get the greaser where it's not supposed to be isn't a bad idea, but you can clean it whenever you want. Just be mindful of that. So I'll wipe this down a little bit later, get that cleaned up, but we're looking good.